economic benefits that come with it. Well, joining me now in the studio is Hebrew University political science professor Avram Giskin, who also chairs the Department of Management, Government, and Law at the Sharei Mishpat Academic Center. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So, Professor Diskin, you were one of the people who drafted this law, which in essence turns Israel into the nation state of the Jewish people. What do you say to other people like the Justice Minister Tzipi Livni or the Attorney General Yudha Weinstein, who say that this not only is unnecessary but harmful to Israel? First of all, I have to say that I was involved when uh, the law was really suggested by 40 Knesset members, most of them from Kadima, from Tzipi Livni's party. And she had a kind of a personal row with uh, Avi Dichter, and I guess that was the main reason why she was at the time against it. Generally speaking, what I have to say is that um, um, what the law is uh, really doing mainly is copying existing laws. It's not some kind of a new law, something that was never there uh, before, but it raises the existing laws um, into the status of, of a basic law, which was not the case before. I think we badly need it because of two reasons. First of all, because we know now that too many people in the world, but too many people also in Israel, do not ex ex accept the legitimacy of uh, Israel as a Jewish, as a nation state. And second, I have to say that there is nothing in any version of the law that I am aware of, including the two versions which was raised lately, which is against democracy. It's quite the opposite. I think that it guarantees democracy, it guarantees uh, equal rights to everybody, including uh, Arab, uh, Druze, uh, Cherkess uh, citizens, etc. So I don't think that uh, really most of the arguments against the law are uh, not political. Well, well, Professor, practically speaking, what does it add? What does it benefit? As I said before, first of all, there is the international arena and the challenge of, of the right of Israel to exist as a Jewish state. Second, there is a problem. We have a serious problem with the judiciary. And we know that now we have two sets of norms. One is the norms set by the Knesset. And then there is another set of norms which are set by decisions of the Supreme Court, which very often are opposite to what was decided by the Knesset. Uh, for instance, many rights were written into another, other basic laws just because the Supreme Court thought that, this basic, that the Knesset should have accepted them. What we do now mm -hmm. is that we actually say to the Supreme Court, one of the principles that characterize Israel is that we are a Jewish state, we are a nation state, like many, many, most, I would say, uh, democracies in the world, and at the same time, we are a very, um, I think, typical and observant uh, democracy. Well, we just heard about Prime Minister Netanyahu's desire to... Uh Take away the residency rights from, and all the social benefits from Jerusalem, East Jerusalem Arab residents. How do you feel about that? Well, that's quite another issue, and here we have to uh, step into a political uh, issue. You know that Jerusalem was annexed, the only part uh, of the West Bank and of all the territories that uh, were occupied by Israel in the Sixth the War, only, the only area which was annexed officially to Israel, excluding, by the way, the Golan Heights, is uh, Jerusalem, and because of that, the, the people in Jerusalem, the Arab residents of Jerusalem, got this uh, special status. And now he way, wants to take them away. And now he, he wants to take them away. Let me tell you a story. You know, just well, yesterday, we just yesterday, I was stoned on the way to Jerusalem. Just when I came from, from a part of Jerusalem, actually. Okay? So you have to balance here. You know, do you want to stone Abraham Diskin's car? Well, I, you're I, I survived it. I, I, it's, everything is fine, no problem. Mm. And uh, you want to have uh, social security uh, rights, etc., etc., at the same time. You have to make a decision. So I think it's quite reasonable. And by the way, there is a history of mm. uh, judicial decisions about that as well. But I think we don't have the time to discuss that. No, we don't. So, uh, thanks, Professor Diskin, for joining us. Thank Appreciate you. It. Tomorrow's deadline.